Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Everlasting Summer, the playthrough that I abandoned many moons ago because due to life circumstances and uh, personal decisions. And what I mean by personal decisions is that uh, I felt like we were coming to a junction where I had to choose which girl I was going to go down the path to. But um, I am a notorious fence sitter, so I just ended up stopping playing rather than choosing which girl I wanted to go for. However, I, uh, due to uh, encouragement from certain people, have decided to come back and um, resume this playthrough. So I have no idea where we started off. I roughly remember that we promised um, Orange Haired Chick that we would go and watch a concert at night. So that's that, and this is the save file. So I won't waste your time anymore. Let's get right into it. I was just wondering if the decision I made was a right one, when suddenly I was interrupted by a ringing, calling the pioneers for lunch. I looked towards the canteen. I suppose it's time to go. Hunger is a sharp thorn. I turned around with an intent to call Elisa to come along. But she looked so cheerless and down. Every musician should know when it's time to leave. Do I make the Russian accent again? For all time's sake. I grumbled under my breath. Yep, we're doing it. We're being racist again. Let's go. Who is marching forward in a row? It is our pioneer squad. Pioneers in a row usually march to the canteen in the Sovyonok camp. I was looking for a place where no one would disturb me, like what happened before. Just so I can eat in peace. And for that, I have to at least not to be the last one to come. But I was pretty sure, whatever happens here, happens whether I want it to or not. The canteen was crammed as full as an egg. Olga Dmitrievna was standing at the entrance, guarding it like a hawk, and I'm pretty sure I have butchered her name again. Good old times. Well, Simeon, were you working hard today? Hard enough. Well done, truly well done, and the hardest is yet to come. I just bit. Oh, definitely. Fine, take a seat next to the girls. She pointed at the table next to the pillar. Slavia, Ulyana, Elena were already sitting there. Not bad company. At least, not the worst. I got my meal and went up to them. Oh, hyperactive one, blondie, and purple haired one. Do you mind if I sit here? I caught myself sounding a bit clueless. There were no other free places anyway. I don't even know what accent this is anymore. No, of course not. Please do! Lena remained silent. Today, the meal consisted of a plate of borscht. I suspected there was some meat lurking in it, but I had no evidence. Some poultry chances are chickenus domesticus. Chicken... What the hell is chickenus domesticus? <laughs> With fried potatoes and a traditional class of compote. I found myself liking the local food more and more, or were integrating to the pioneer life. I guess I just came to the conclusion that I have no other choice, which means that there's no use in complaining. Thank god there's something to eat. Coming to the ball tonight? I don't know. Though I already had my arrangements with Elisa. Welcome! He got nowhere to go! Kapow! Uyana said happily. You will come for sure. Of course! I can't miss the opportunity to watch you make a fool of yourself! Ha <laughs> ha! She got it right, so I decided not to reply. <laughs> and what about you? I asked Lena. Yes. Dot dot dot. That's it? <laughs> she replied briefly. See? You should go too, then, said Slavia, as if leaving me no choice. 
Don't forget to wear your tail coat. Tail coat? What kind of ball is this? Oh, it's a joke. I get it. Apparently, Uliana was so pleased with her joke that she laughed out loud. But I really had nothing to wear. My wardrobe was just a pioneer uniform and my winter clothes, which would be inappropriate even in the evening. Why is our winter clothes inappropriate in the evening? If it's cold, it's cold, man. And what will you be dressed in, entertainer? See? Crap! Ha ha! Will it be a little dress, just like a kindergarten's matinee? What is this accent I'm doing? It's not even Russian. I've butchered it to the point of no existence. Liana <laughs> turned red. Looks like I managed to offend her. No, I will wear a biohazard suit! Just so I don't catch an infection from you! Well, that's pretty... Well, that joke did not... That joke did not age well, did it? Now, <laughs> I don't... That's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say is I'm social distancing people. How ironic that this that this joke was here. I wonder, what kind of infection are you afraid of catching from me? Enough, you guys. Don't quarrel. Idiocy, of course! Ha <laughs> ha! Looks like Uliana was highly pleased with her, as she thought, brilliant answer again. You know, if you already have the flu, you can't catch a cold. Two can play at that game. Yeah! What are you implying? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I looked away slyly. Ho ho! Ho ho! Do you mean that? She went red again. I don't mean anything. Guys! Given that it was Lena who interfered, it probably really was time to stop. Asking for it, you gotta get it. <laughs> I thought we said that it was finally time to stop. Why are we still going? What? You're finally wise up. Instead of replying, Uliana grabbed her plate filled with borscht and tipped it over my head. Damn. This game met an unexpected finale. Oh, you little. She jumped up and tried to run away. But this time she won't get away. I grabbed her hand. Oh wow, the music's kicking up. Um, and now what? I can't just smash her head against the table. Do you want to see a magic trick? This pantomime lasted a few seconds. Suddenly, Uliana skillfully grabbed a glass full of compote and slashed it in my face. She is... she splashes a lot of things on us. That way, she managed to get free of my grip. She dashed off towards the counter and I chased her. This resulted in several flipped tables, a pile of smashed tableware, five pioneers crippled by various injuries and full exhaustion of both parties. What in God's name did we do? A draw, sort of. A belligerent draw. With too much belligerence. We stood before each other and breathed heavily. Tell me you won't behave this way again. And and you? Olga Olga Dmitrievna. Dmitrievna. Dmitrievna, I don't know how I don't know how to pronounce this. Snuck up on us from behind. There's someone in the comment section that's gonna that's gonna tell me how to pronounce this again, I swear to god. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. When you think about it, such a riot shouldn't go couldn't go unnoticed. Well, are you satisfied with yourselves now? Her voice appeared to be calm, but I was sure she was just about to explode. And who's gonna clean up all this mess? Exactly what happened. Well, I'm asking you, who? Him! Replied Uliana with complete confidence. 
Her. I objected less confidently. Both. Yeah, yeah. Paul gives in the chat for Olga Dmitrievna. The camp leader brought a conclusive end to this ongoing argument. Generally, I wasn't sure that my share of the blame was more than hers. Although, Ulyana didn't have a drop of guilt on her face. Beat it! I'm not cleaning! Ain't nobody got time for that! This is his fault! He started it first! No, it isn't. Oh, yes it is! I'm not going to sort out all that nonsense! Semyon? 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 Noodles. Go grab a mop, a bucket, some cloths, you know, that kind of stuff in the closet, and ask for you! She looked at Ulyana with such a burning gaze that I felt a bit sorry for the girl. You! Start to pick up the broken tableware immediately! Or face the wrath of my fury! Olga Dmitrievna took a deep breath and continued. You are nothing but trouble! How many times have I told you? I decided to skip the lecture and went to the closet that appeared to be near the exit. Suddenly, a perfect idea flashed in my head. Why don't I just run away? Sure, Olga Dmitrievna has caught us already, but I'm not the one to blame. Um, of course, I'm not that true pioneer she keeps talking about, but in comparison with Ulyana... Anyway, she's the principal culprit. It's not like I have nothing better to do than cleaning up the mess here. I have to seek answers. The truth is out there, somehow flashed through my mind. How do I save? Yes, save scumming time. You cannot, you cannot take this away from me. Save game. I will... I will stay and help Ulyana with cleaning up because I do not want to betray Olga Dmitrievna's trust and I'm pretty sure if we meet her again she is gonna kick my ass. Nah, running away is hardly a good idea. I agree me. For starters, Olga Dmitrievna has caught me already and dashing off would only aggravate my punishment. And why do we have to say her full name every time? Is that a thing? As well as that, I was indeed partially guilty. Of course, it was all her fault. But if I hadn't reacted like that, probably we could have avoided this thrashing. Probably. I opened the cabinet and took out a broom, a mop, and a dustpan. Olga Dmitrievna wasn't anywhere near Ulyana by the time I returned. She's gone? Can't you see for yourself? You blind git? Ulyana looked upset. All her youthful spirit vanished without a trace. Okay, hang on a sec. I'll go and wash myself a bit first. I shot her an angry glance and headed towards the exit. I washed the scraps of lunch off myself and returned to the canteen. Did we even get to eat? There's no escaping it. We have to clean it up. It's all because of you! Just a single gaze from her gave me the creeps. Of course it is! It's me who's guilty of everything! It's me who's a local natural hazard. Oh, shut up! Still, it's kind of strange that she's not trying to avoid this cleanup duty. Ulyana had a solid opportunity to just run away and leave me alone, but somehow she did the exact opposite, diligently gathering broken plate fragments, mopping the floor, picking up chairs and tables. Hopefully, she does not cut herself on the broken plate fragments, so it's a dangerous. In fact, she was so fast that I had a tough time keeping up with her. Well now, aren't you suddenly acting all goody-goody? I think I'm, I'm not even sure this is a Russian accent. I'm so sorry for any, any people with like a Russian friend or like you are Russian. I am so sorry. I apologize in advance again. It's not like I want to spend the whole day here, you dork! She still sounded irritated. Listen, you've got to understand that you can't behave like that. At least not to such an extent. 
For some reason, I decided to try and give her a moral lecture. I haven't done a thing! It was you who was calling me names! Uliana grabbed a bucket and a mop and went to the farthest corner of the canteen. Looks like she's still angry. Looking at... Looking back at the mountain of broken tableware, I finally began to understand the scope of the catastrophe. Holy hell, what did we do? Did we just bulldoze through these like entire groups of like students eating like their lunch or something? We're lucky that at least our forks and spoons are made of metal. We, we still have something to eat with. Holy shit! But there are hardly any plates left. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry, um... Hey! Oriana called me with a shout. I went over to her. I don't get it! Why do you hate me so much? Uh... Her face became so serious that I was ready to believe that it wasn't just yet another trick of hers. Why do you think so? I have no idea, that's exactly why I'm asking you! Dumbass! Why the fuck would I ask you if I knew already? God damn! Bitch! I don't hate you. It's just that sometimes you behave like... Well, you know. As simple as that, but still true. Like what? I have no idea! She lifted her gaze to me, boiling with curiosity. Well, for starters, what's the big idea in pouring the compote all over me? You were asking for it! She smiled for the first time since we started cleaning. Yeah, sure. I heaved a deep sigh. <sighs> So, what do you expect from others, others, then? Nothing! She replied acidly. This discussion was over, so I just continued cleaning up in silence. It took us a few hours to fix up the canteen. At last, all the broken tableware was gone. Chairs and tables were in their designated places. The floor looked clean. We were sitting together with Uliana next to the food counter, breathing heavily, breathing heavily, deservedly resting. Now you see how much effort has to be put in because of a silly trick. But I'm not tired at all! Oh yeah, then go run five laps. Though the sweat pouring down her face told the opposite story. Oh well, good for you. So, what are we going to do next? I don't know about I don't know about you, but I'd rather go. No, nope, that's not all. You have to. She hesitated. What do you mean? To help me with another little thing. I said that so fast. I'm not even sure if I understood myself. Th is th thinking of another silly prank. You bet. She was smiling broadly. Oh, whoops. I am not your man here. I'm more than fed up with just one punishment for today. Okay, here's the deal. If you help me now, there won't be any more pranks. Sure, sure, that was an inviting prospect. But somehow I couldn't bring myself to trust Uliana even for a moment. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask. So... What is your cunning plan? We're gonna steal the candy! What? I should have expected something like that. Candy is for kids. Bullshit, I eat candy. Soon the chef will go out to dump t t the trash. Nobody's gonna see us. Why did I stammer trash? Count me out. Adios, muchachos. Whatever! She grunted and turned away. Then I'll do it myself! Oh, goddammit, I keep accidentally right clicking. And I won't allow. 
I couldn't even finish the sentence as Ulyana already jumped over the counter, ran to the cabinet, opened the door, and started rummaging through it furiously. Hey, cut that! It's not like you haven't got enough problems with Olga Dmitrievna. She didn't reply. You won't get away with just cleaning duty for something like that. Ulyana closed the cabinet. She held a huge bag of candy in her hands. Ah, you little... Put it back. She stuck out her tongue at me and dashed off through the back door. I couldn't just leave it at that. I darted off in pursuit. Sure, the girl had quite a head start, but I still funneled all my energy into the chase. <laughs> I won't lose her again. <laughs> We ran through the square. <laughs> Turned to the music club building. <gasps> and came out onto the for forest trail. Oh, this is a new background piece. I'd almost caught Ulyana when she stopped abruptly. I couldn't pull up as sharply, so I crashed into her, sending us sprawling. Ah, those times. We rolled down onto the grass. Gotcha! I gave a victorious shout. No, you didn't! She replied with an ashamed tone. Ulyana was lying under me. Oh, classic position. Her face was right next to mine. I felt her erratic beating and the heat of her body. Sure, right now she's only a child, but soon enough she'll become a woman. Let's not think these things in this position, shall we? Let's let's leave. I don't want to get arrested by the FBI. Wait, we're in Russia, so the the the, the KGB? Do do they do that? I I'm not. Sh I I think I'm just being racist at this point. The 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 CIA. Let's just let's just say the CIA then. The police. Actually, you want the police? It was pretty embarrassing. Uh, hold up! <laughs> hold up! <laughs> Wait a minute! You gonna rape me? She said, coming back to her senses. Hold up there, Semyon! <laughs> Semyon, we need to talk. I don't think we should go down this path. It's a very uh, dangerous one and also a very illegal one. How old are you? How old is this girl? I know how old Semyon is. He's... Yeah, but how old is she? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh... <laughs> the FBI watching this video, um, please don't kill me. You want me to? Anyway, it's more like a game to her. What? Excuse me? Sure do! She gave a cunning smile and snorted quietly. Or was it just my imagination? I'm not, I'm not really in the mood. Ah, whatever! Oyana reached up and bit me on the nose. I wasn't expecting that and even pulled back a little. Just the moment of hesitation was enough for her to wrestle out and run a dozen feet away. Watch it! You're gonna regret this later! She laughed out loud and disappeared into the woods. I feel violated somehow. The candy bag was left lying on the ground near me. I wonder if she dropped it on purpose? It's getting near dinner time, so I had to hurry up and return the candy. And preferably, very preferably, stay under the radar. Oh yeah, stay under the radar after we've created a, like this that massive scene in the cafeteria. Of course I'll explain the situation. It was Ulyana who had stolen them. But who's gonna believe me? Olga, Olga Dmitrievna was already waiting for me at the entrance to the canteen. Good job, Semyon. On what? I hit the bag of sweets behind my back. The bag was transparent and too big to put it in my pocket. I was talking about the cleanup. Everything is clean and tidy. Well, yeah. And where is Ulyana? 
I wish I knew. She shall come soon. Okay then, go and have your dinner. I entered the canteen. To my utter lack of surprise, it was full. Now I really don't know how to return the bag without being noticed. Sure, I could do it in the evening, but what do I do with it now? Samyun! Oh shit! I turned around. Slop Yao was in front of me. Wow, what's that? She looked at the bag that I didn't manage to hide in time. Caught red handed, or more like sweet handed. Time to prepare for a scolding. Uh oh. The Z's are uh, my grandmother's ashes, uh, sweets, yes. Where from? I stole them, damn it! Take a hint! Got them from Ulyana. Oh, I see. Same old song and dance? What do you mean? It's not the first time she's stolen sweets. And why am I not surprised? Let me handle this. Thanks. Slavia saves the day yet again. Thank you, Slavia. Mwah. Molto bene. Thank you very much. Uh, she took the bag and headed to the buffet. I had no desire to listen what she was going to say while returning the sweets. So I started to look around the canteen, looking for a place to sit. It seems that I would have to share a dinner table with Electronic and Shurik. There were no more places to sit. What's happening, gentlemen? Every time I had to deal with them, I got an itching desire to tease them, or at least to drop some cheeky or cocky banter. It might be too risky to behave that way, but the Electronic Brothers were my primary source of positive emotions. The Bro Squad, how are you doing? Fine, what about you? Kids and Mises. Did something happen? Lots of stuff. Mind sharing? Nah, some other time maybe. Suit yourself. Now both of them have the same Russian accent. He made a helpless gesture. We're going to the ball after dinner. Electronic giggled. I know that. Who would you want to ask out? I haven't thought about it yet. What about you? I will. I. Oh, how to turn tables, my friend. It seemed that this question caught him off guard. Ask Uliana. That will make her happy. No thanks! Electronic furiously waved his hands. And you, Shurik, you got to ask Elisa out. Thanks, I'll pass. He looked calmer than his mate. Oh, come on guys, it'd be fun. And in any and in any case, we've got things to do. We still have to finish the robot. Oh, that's a marvelous idea. Ask your robot out. Can it dance? It can't even walk yet. Shurik probably missed the point completely. Why, it would be a great demonstration of our achievements in front of the camp! And what would we show to them? Yeah, you're right. They both stared at their plates disappointedly. That's semi-depressing. Don't worry boys, keep at it. Soon the robot can run. Dot 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 and dot dot dot. Time passes. Dinner was over and the pioneers started to disperse, and it is also time for me to disperse as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, marks the end of today's episode, well, of today or this week, depending on how long I can edit this. Yes, my upload schedule is absolutely messy. But yes, that's all for today, and thank you for watching. I plan to resume this series and play it till completion. So I hope you'll stick around and watch it. If you enjoyed it or have any ideas about it, please do leave a comment down below. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.